Here's another example. Forestry specialists are concerned that a stand of pines in Yellowstone Park are suffering from malnutrition after their first 10 years of growth. They conduct a sample of 15 trees and find that the mean diameter is 1.4 feet, with a standard deviation of half a foot. Ponderosa pines at 10 years of age are expected to measure 1.5 feet in diameter on average. At the 99% confidence level, can the scientists conclude that the stand of pines are underdeveloped? So let's see what, what are the sample statistics. What sample did they take? They took a sample of 15 trees. So n equals 15. The sample size is 15. And they found that the average diameter, x bar, was 1.4 feet and that the standard deviation was 0 0.5 feet. They want to be 99% confident, which is going to imply alpha equals 1 minus 0 0.99 equals 1%. So alpha in this case is going to equal 1%. Step one is to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So the null in this case is that, well, these trees are behaving normal. Do we have enough evidence to support the, uh, is there enough evidence to reject that the trees are normal? Normal diameter for these trees is 1.5. The alternative hypothesis is that these trees are underdeveloped. In other words, the alternative is that the mean of the pines is actually less than 1.5. Step two, as before, we are doing a one sample difference of means. But here, our, t our, our sample size is small. We only have 16 trees. So we're going to use a t-test. Three as we've already determined, our significance level is 0 0.01 or 1%. Let's make our drawing now. 4. So this is where we're going to put u naught or a z or t score of 0 and here we have a left tail test. We want to see if the x bar that we get is less than the hypothesized mean. So we're going to have a critical value over here. That's where our critical value is, z sub c. What's our critical value? We can use the table. First of all, the sample size is 15. And I should have said over here a t test. And remember that we are going to use n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So we have 14 degrees of freedom. And over here, because our significance level is 1%, we are going to put 1% of the area in the rejection zone. So this over here is the rejection zone. And we have 1% of the area there. So based on that, let's use the 98% confidence level, because that's going to put 1% on the left side and 1% on the right side. We're going to use 14 degrees of freedom. So we go down to 14 over here, and we find that the critical value to use is 2.62. Now, this table is going to give you the positive critical value. In our case, we are actually going to use the negative of that. So we have negative 2.62, and that's the critical value over here. Step five is to calculate the test statistic. So here we have t equals x bar minus mu h over the standard error of the mean. 1.4 minus 1.5, what was the standard error, uh, was 0.5. So we have 0.5 over root n. That equals minus, whoops, 
minus 0 0.1 up top and down below I'll use my calculator mm, 0.5 divided by root 15 0 0.13 which equals minus 0 0.77. So our test statistic, our t-test, is minus 0 0.77. When we plot that in our graph, that's about over here. t equals 0 0.77, negative 0 0.77. negative 0 0.77 and that is not in the zone of rejection so in step 6 what do we conclude we fail to reject the null so in this case we don't have enough evidence to say that the trees are underperforming or in other words, it's safe to assume that the trees are performing as expected.